The German half-track vehicles of World War II, a familiar sight to anyone watching documentaries or war movies. Though the most well-known of these vehicles is the so-called Hanomag, the armored troop carrier, mainly used by the Panzer Grenadiers. But actually, the German army used lots of different types of half-track vehicles. So today we will take a look at all of them, talk a little bit of all the types, but we will only go into more details on the armored personal carrier versions. So without further ado, let's begin. Most countries looked into the half-track vehicles during the 1930s and tried them for several roles. The French Citroën Cagres vehicles, for example, or the US Army Scout cars, like the T7, which eventually was developed to the M2 and M3 half-tracks. I have already made a video on these American vehicles, so if you're interested in their history, check it out. The German army was no exception, and during the 1930s developed a lot of different types of half-track vehicles. The advantages of the half-track over the normal wheeled vehicle far surpass the drawbacks, especially when we talk about heavy towing vehicles and artillery tractors, which would carry heavy equipment and tow heavy cannons over rough terrain. So low ground pressure and high traction was a very important factor for these vehicles. As mentioned, the German army had several different vehicles developed during the 1930s, and later during World War II new ones appeared, some of them purpose-built, some of them just modified from already used trucks. So let's see which were these vehicles. To keep things simple, we will not look at them by size or development date, but simply go by their designation numbers. What do these designations actually mean though? The SDKFZ is an abbreviation of the German Sonderkraftfahrzeug, or Special Purpose Vehicle. Basically, every German military vehicle was designated SDKFZ and their own numbers. Now we know what the naming means, so let's start looking at the different half-track vehicles. The first one on our list is the SDKFZ-2. The so-called Kettenrad was a half-track motorcycle, originally developed for airborne troops. It was designed in 1939 and entered service in 1941, and it was first used in the invasion of the Soviet Union. The idea behind it was to have a light and small vehicle, but with good traction, that is able to carry cargo over rough terrain. They were used to lay communication cables and carry heavy airloads, and also used on airfields as towing vehicles. The next one is the SD KFZ-3, or the Maltier, German for Mule. This designation covers a series of half-track trucks, which were not purpose-built, but modified. The German troops after invading the Soviet Union soon realized that there was no road network as such, and their wheeled vehicles had difficulties operating in the deep mud and later snow on the Eastern Front. Half-tracks were much more usable, but those were mainly used as artillery tractors, and could not be removed from their role just to carry equipment. So the Germans came up with the idea that the already used Opel Ford and Daimler trucks should be modified with Panzer 1 and 2 trucks. These were in use from 1942 until the end of the war. Opel designed its own track running gear version, but this was not used in the end. Instead a simpler, horseman style suspension was preferred, which was almost identical to the one used on the British Universal Carrier, or its American version, the T-16. Of course these vehicles were not as good as the purpose-built half-tracks, but they were much better than the original rear-wheel drive trucks. Some of them later received armor plating and became the SD KFZ-4 models. A modification of these vehicles carried the 15cm Panzerwerfer rocket launcher. The next SD KFZ-6 was a 5-ton purpose-built vehicle designed for the medium artillery tractor role. This vehicle was designed before World War II, and around 3,500 units were built until the end of the war. It could carry 11 men and around 500 kg cargo, and tow a gun or engineering equipment. It had a variant carrying a 37mm gun, and a few anti-tank conversions were built using captured Soviet 76mm guns. The SDKFZ-7 was a bigger 8-ton purpose-built half-track of the German army. Designed in 1934, it was in service from 1938 until the end of the war. 
It was mainly intended to tow the 88mm anti-aircraft guns or 150mm howitzers. It could carry 12 men or almost 2 tons of cargo and had a towing limit of 8 tons. The vehicle had two anti-aircraft variants, one equipped with 420mm cannons, the other one with 137mm cannon. Though the SDKFZ-7 looks quite similar to the SDKFZ-6, but you can tell them apart by some differences. The 7 had a bigger cargo area and a bigger overhang at the rear. The side access doors are wider on the 7 and taller on the 6. After a few of these vehicles were captured, the British tried to build their own version. Bedford designed the vehicle, it was called Tracklet, and it did quite well on trials, but in the end it didn't go to production. The SDKFZ-8 was a 12-ton purpose-built half-track, also designed before the war. It was developed to tow very heavy artillery pieces, like the 210mm mortars or 170mm cannons. It was powered by an 8.5 liter petrol engine, could carry 11 men or 2.5 tons of cargo, and had a towing capacity of 12 tons. Sometimes they were used as recovery vehicles, making use of their huge towing capabilities. 10 of them were converted to carry the 88mm guns in anti-tank roll. These received a different armored cabin, armor protection around the engine, and a big gun shield for the gun crew. The SDKFZ-8, apart from being overall larger than the smaller half-tracks, can be identified by the more rounded grille, the larger road wheels in the tracks, the raised front and rear sprockets, and the hump in the mudguard over the front sprocket. The heaviest of the German purpose-built half-tracks was the SDKFZ-9, an 18-ton truck. These were used to tow the heaviest artillery pieces, like the 240mm cannons, and also employed as tank recovery vehicles. It was powered by a 10.8 liter petrol engine and had a towing capacity of 28 tons. It had different variants for tank maintenance crews, mounting cranes with 6 or 10 ton lifting capacity. 14 of these vehicles were also converted for anti tank roll mounting the 88mm cannon and received armor plating around the engine and crew compartment. This vehicle looks very similar to the SDKFZ-8, but again it is longer and larger overall. The easiest features to identify the SDKFZ-9 is the fewer and larger cooling slots on the side of the engine compartment, and the front and rear sprockets are larger and less raised than on the SDKFZ-8. The SDKFZ-10 was the smallest of the purpose-built German half-tracks, with the exception of the Kettenrad, of course. It was designed to tow light equipment, like the 20 or 37mm anti-tank guns. The vehicle was powered by a 42 liter petrol engine, could carry 8 men, and had a towing capacity of 1 ton. It had several variants. The 1, 2 and 3 were chemical warfare versions. The 1 being a chemical detection vehicle, the 2 a decontamination vehicle, and the 3 a poison gas dispenser vehicle. The variants 4 and 5 carried 20mm anti-aircraft cannons. Identifying features for the SDKFZ-10 are the horizontal straight mudguard over the tracks, and the very low engine compartment, almost in level with the front fenders. This vehicle was the base for the SDKFZ-250 light armored personnel carrier, which we will take a closer look at in a few minutes. The last one on our list is the SDKFZ-11, which was a 3-ton half-track developed to tow medium guns. This vehicle was also purpose-built and entered service before the war. It used a 4.2 liter petrol engine, could carry 8 men or 1800 kilograms of cargo, and had a towing capacity of 3 tons. It was also used as an ammo carrier and had versions for chemical warfare, just like the SDKFZ 10. 
identifying features are the higher engine compartment than the SDK FZ10, and the front fenders and track mudguards are made from a single piece of metal. This vehicle was the base for the SDK FZ251 variant. And with this we arrive to the two armored personnel carriers, which we will take a closer look at. As the German doctrine placed the tanks in the center of their tactics, it became clear the motorized infantry will need something better than just trucks to follow the tanks. In 1939, the Inspectorate for Motorized Troops put out a request for armored troop carriers. Two designs were developed, a light armored personnel carrier, the SDKFZ-250, and a medium armored personnel carrier, the SDKFZ-251. For the smaller vehicle, the SDKFZ-10 was selected as a base, and the manufacturer of the half-track, Demag, set to work on the new design. The new vehicle used the same tracks, front axle and drivetrain as the SDKFZ-10, but the tracks were shortened compared to the base vehicle. The vehicle was designed in about a year and entered service in 1941. The new design, contrary to the conventional SDKFZ-10, received a new angular armored body. It featured 8mm thick armor plates on the side and the rear, and 14.5mm on the front. The armor offered enough protection against small arms fire and shrapnels, but it couldn't stop bigger caliber weapons. The top was open, which allowed the troops to fire from the vehicle, but left them exposed to mortar or artillery fire, hand grenades or enemy aircraft. In late 1943, the complex body shape was changed to a more simple one with flat sides. The vehicle used a 4.2 liter petrol engine, developing 100 horsepower. It could reach a maximum speed of 76 km an hour on roads and had a range of 300 km. The standard armament was one or two MG34 machine guns. The German army used these vehicles in every role they could think of, and even the variants had subvariants, not to mention the countless field modifications. There were radio vehicles, command vehicles, mortar carriers, self-propelled guns, the list goes on and on. Similarly to its smaller sibling, the SDK FZ-251 was also based on an existing vehicle. The base for this new armored personnel carrier was the SDK FZ-11 half-track, built by Henomeg. The new vehicle used the same drivetrain and tracks as the SDK FZ-11, but it received a new body which was very similar to an earlier Rheinmetall prototype. The armor protection was very similar to the smaller SDK FZ-250, with 14.5mm thick plates on the front and 8mm on the sides and the rear. This vehicle entered service in 1939, but production was very slow at the beginning. In 1939 only 232 were produced, and by the end of 1940 another 337 were finished. It had four main variants during its production. The original A and B models featured two angled plates on the front of the engine compartment and large bulging access doors on the back. The C model introduced in 1942 featured a simplified front armor design, but kept the original rear doors. The final D model, that started production in 1943, was redesigned to simplify production and featured a simple angled backplate with flat doors. The SDK FZ-251 used the same 4.2 liter petrol engine as its smaller sibling, producing 100 horsepower. Its maximum speed was 52 km an hour, with a maximum range of 300 km. The basic armament was two MG-34 or MG-42 machine guns. Altogether, around 15,000 units were produced between 1939 and 1945. This vehicle also had a great amount of variants and subvariants, and a dazzling array of different modifications. They were used in every role possible. The half-tracks were used in every theater of the war, but contrary to the German propaganda, 
they were not used in big numbers, they were costly and slow to manufacture. In the first years of the war, all the SS groups and elite divisions received them. At the beginning of the Western Campaign, around 500 of them were in use, and in 1941, when the Germans attacked the Soviet Union, around 1000 of them were available. The open top design, though it allowed the troops to fight from the vehicle, also made them vulnerable, and in extreme climates, like in the Russian winter or in North Africa, the vehicle became extremely cold or extremely hot on the inside. Though later production increased, but there were never enough of these vehicles to actually play the role envisioned for them, all the motorized infantry riding them and following the tanks. As the war progressed, more and more of them were converted to special roles, fire support, anti-air, ambulance and so on. Though they never had the numbers needed, these vehicles still became one of the icons of World War II, many of them were restored and still around today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.